Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Cold Plate Cooling Loop Requirements Doc session. My name is Cam Turner, I'm the Director of Advanced Technology at Cool IT Systems and I'm joined here by my colleague. Uh, this is Philip Yu, I'm with uh, Veolia, I'm the product application expert for cooling water supply. So in this talk we're going to talk about the uh, requirements document that has been released. Uh, you know, big shout out to the incubation committee and Rob for pushing this through. It, it got published on Friday which allowed me to grab the QR code which is up on the screen there for you. So please take a picture and go download the document and, and give it a read. What we're going to talk about today is what are requirements docs? And, and go through kind of the history of the coal plate requirements document uh, that goes back to 2019. We'll talk about what is and is not covered in this document and, and basically how you would use it. Before we dive into that, I just wanted to just give a, a, a shout out and a big thanks to the 18 people from 12 different companies that were involved in the creation of this paper. We've been working on it you know, bi-weekly for a couple of years and we, we got to the end point once and then decided it really does need uh, some input from our friends at Zutacor to talk about uh, two-phase as well. Um, and so, you know, we're covered from all the way from the silicon manufacturers and end users up to all of the uh, cooling component suppliers. And I think you know, again, thanks to everyone on the team. Uh, the dedication and the effort has really made for a document that is very prescriptive from the, from the CDU all the way down to the coal plate. So starting from the beginning, what is a requirements document? Uh, I got this slide from Rolf and I think it's a really good description of what the purpose of a requirement document is. So, you know, broad parameters to which any product in a domain needs to qualify against. In terms of what OCP is looking for, a requirements document is the generic parameters for a specified technology domain, common terminology and metrics, and I think that's, that's a really important one to make sure that everybody is comparing their solutions apples to apples using the same terminology. Uh, unambiguous criteria to enforce safety, which obviously all of our design safety is the top priority, and then uh, guidance for the common interfaces, which, which really is the, the key part of the scaling this innovation through collaboration. If we want this to take off and, and be a truly hyperscale style solution, all these interfaces need to be combined and um, interoperable. What can't they combine or uh, contain? It cannot be limiting to innovation. It cannot contain any IP and it cannot be prescriptive on design. And that, this paper is a reflection of all of those requirements. So taking a walk back down memory lane here, in 2019, uh, the first coal plate requirement document was written uh, so it was Jessica from Intel, Nigel, and uh, Elizabeth Langer. And that started off a kind of cascading event of a bunch of other white papers that deep dive into a uh, bunch of different technology domains within the, within the TCS loop, right? So we got the UQD spec came out and the hose and manual coupling best practices and all of these documents were much more in depth than the, than the coal plate requirements, but there was a little bit of overlap. So when they started the process of revising this uh, and we formed the group, the intent was to take all of the information, provide a summary and a link to all of these different documents. So this, this requirements document is intended to be a, a uh, single source of truth and kind of an index out to all of the other papers that may be of interest depending on the architecture of your system. 
once this all goes live and you're able to download the presentation, I've got a link to all of the different white papers that are referenced within this uh, contribution. Almost all of them are available on the OCP contribution portal, uh, except the ASHRAE TC 9.9 and the DMTF Redfish spec, which was another one of the things that we thought was important is to take not only the OCP uh, requirements, but also tie in and uh, what else is happening in industry. So hence the, the ASHRAE and Redfish. So what technologies are covered? Single phase coal plate and two phase pool boiling coal plates from the CDU down to the coal plate. What's not covered, uh, immersion and door heat exchanger. These are both uh, OCP projects that have a vibrant community. I put up the QR codes to their wikis and you're gonna be hearing a lot more about the work that's happening in those work streams. Uh, over the next day and a half. The passive TCS or loop heat pipe uh, requirements doc that's underway, uh, Jordan mentioned it earlier, so that's Ben and Vadim are working through that. And if you want to contribute to that, I'm sure they'd be very happy to have you. Uh, chassis immersion is not covered, uh, nor is two-phase flow boiling, as uh, there was no member companies that were uh, stepped up to contribute to that one. For you. Okay. Thank you, Cam. So Jordan talked about liquid cooling is very important. So cold plate cooling actually need a lot of liquid. So let's talk about liquid cooling. For cold plate to be cool, first you need a facility water system. Facility water system could be water based, could be PG25 based, and it has a several guidelines, could be a W1 to W4. So depending on your facility, you can have, have different temperature limit. Then from that, you can connect it to the CDU. Usually there's a plate and freight key exchanger connect between the FWS and the TCS. So to just block any contamination from the outside environment going to the, the critical CDU system. So CDU then has long cooling environment. We had discussed that last year during the presentation. Could be a water-based coolant, could be a PG25-based coolant, then that connected to the, the ITE. Then that's complete the whole cooling loop. So there's a lot of water-based cooling involved. So the so most important, the CDU cooling for cold play. Usually there's a environment on the equipment filtration, and this paper talk about all the detail involving how we use the environment for the cold play cooling. So we'll just talk about a small detail, and all the detail can be downloaded from the paper and you can read in, in more detailed information. So the cooling liquid selection, usually we'll talk about the thermal performance. The treated water has the best thermal performance. And so dielectric liquid, either single phase has less, but it has a other advantage. So the something you have to memorize is, you can see the environmental concern for the dielectric liquid, they might contain PFAS. So PFAS getting more and more environmental concern, even in the fab environment. For any PFAS containing coolant, they might face some strict regulation in the future. So if you're a vendor of the dielectric coolant, you might want to think about excluding PFAS as a possible ingredient of your formula. And the other about the risk of biofouling for treated water, so that's the highest risk because uh, the water actually contain a lot of issue, even as the best cooling media, but water actually develops everything. So any organic material, corrosion product can go into water phase. So usually you use a water-based coolant, you have to deal with a lot of PM. For PG25, much less direct electric liquid, you don't even have to do any PM, they're just uh, run by itself. 
So all the detail is discussed in the paper. The next is a rack manifold. So Jordan talked about that in the previous conversation. So this just to give you the criteria, we try to define the liquid volume, the dimension, and the weight manifold design. And this picture show is just a, is a quick disconnect. It could be a, a blind mate or it could be a latch one. So it's a variation. It all depends on how you design it. There's a, a lot of options you can choose from and also the, the air vent for the manifold. Next one is CDU. So CDU, usually we define the capacity by, by kilowatt. Then all the other liquid volume, it varies from the different vendor. And the weight, lift, the width, depth, is all defined by the, the vendor. And you have the, some other criteria like the the facility water system, uh, TCS water system, all defined in the different table in our white paper. So next, we'll talk about hardware management. I'm going to turn, turn over to Cam. So tying all of this together, of course, is the hardware management. There's been a lot of work that's been done within OCP uh, developing the redfish schemas. And so Mick Jones, who's the lead of that group, has has contributed into this document as well. And it, it, it discusses the overall schemas that you would need for a cooling unit or a CDU, the cooling loop, uh, leak detectors, and, and there's, a, there's a whole bunch of other information uh, available that needs to be reported depending on sort of what level of uh, redundancy, I guess, what would be the right term uh, you want in your system. So the one thing I would note that the, the OCP schema for redfish is, is the schema for redfish. Uh, it's, they're one and the same, so this is pretty much an industry standard now. Uh, tying into the safety requirements, so the group settled on IEC 62368 and 60335 as your baseline requirements. Uh, again, the, the thing to note here is there's regional requirements, different customers are going to have different requirements, but we'll, we need to make sure that these systems operate safely under all conditions. So. We got a requirements document, now what? How, are you, how is this intended to be used? If, for example, you wanted to create a liquid cooled server, uh, you would want, you'd have to create a specification for that server. So this, the liquid cooling portion of that would have to reference all of the requirements in this requirement doc. So in the doc, there is a downloadable, uh, a link to a download spreadsheet, which is essentially a checklist. And the checklist allows you to go through all of the tables that Philip showed earlier, which we called parameters of importance. And if you're using single phase cold plate, you have to check off and provide, you know, what's your differential pressure at this flow rate, all of, all of the different metrology um, and specifications there. Once you've dealt with that, uh, assuming everything matches and nothing needs to be updated, you know, then it goes through this standard OCP process of CLAs and getting the community review, getting it through the incubation committee, and then once the spec is released, you can create your product and it goes up onto the, uh, the product uh, portal, I guess they call it. So the call to action, so this, this document's done. Um, one of the things that we would have liked to have added but didn't have anybody who wanted to contribute was pump two-phase coal plates. So if anybody's interested in reopening the document and adding that, I think it would be very valuable to the document. Uh, you can come see me or Jordan and, and we can talk about how that gets going. And then otherwise, uh, please join the monthly coal plate calls. These are like once a month, it's an hour. Jordan does a great job of setting out the, uh, the agenda beforehand. And it's really the place where you're going to see everything that's happening in the community, everything that's 
going to get published has to be reviewed in one of those first. And uh, yeah, it's just a great place to sit and have a chat every now and again. So with that, uh, I know there's five other engineering workshops going on right now, so we really appreciate you spending your time with us. And we'll take any questions if you have some. Can you step to the mic, please? Just curious what redfish is. <laughs> it, uh, it's a protocol. Uh, you can come talk to Mick to get the, the full details of it, but it's a hardware management protocol based on, on uh, JSON. Is there any uh, modifications needed for the standard ORV3 rack to fit in manifolds and fit in your secondary loop, like your technical water loop for people cooling? Yeah, so there is an entire work stream going on with that, and Glenn will be presenting that, I think, right next, actually. Yeah, he's, he's next, so uh, that'll get answered there. Hi, um, I'm wondering, does the specification speak to any of the fluids besides water, like the dielectrics or the engineered fluids um, that are being used for single phase and two phase coal plate? Uh, we just define you can use a wallet base or PC25 based fluid. We don't specify what need to be used. It's a general guideline. So if you have wallet base, as long as it will fit the cold play requirement, you can, you can use it. If you have PG25, you can use it as well. But sometimes certain equipment, they require the higher temperature running. So PG25 sometimes will limit it on the temperature range. So it's all depend on the equipment requirement. Okay, but you mentioned something in your talk about uh, PFAS and the regulations and the fluids. That's, that's usually in the immersion fluid. So for the single phase or two phase immersion fluid, if you have PFAS, you might face some regulation in the future if they start regulate the PFAS. But some of those fluids are also used in cold plate design, right? The cold plate design? Yeah, you can use dielectric and cold plate design too, right? Yep. Uh, so there's kind of three documents that will be referred to in that doc. One is for PG25, the other is treated water, and then it links off to the uh, all the work that the immersion work stream has done. And, and so it's similar fluids. They covered a lot of it, and we do discuss uh, with, you know, Specifically with the Zutacore solution in there, they they talked about some of those concerns. So, so as well. those things are in the in the specification for coal plate, correct? In the requirements, yes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are you going to look at the review the uh, wetted material list uh, in the coal plate loop? So the requirements is that you provide a wetted material list. Yeah, we actually published the weather material list yeah, last year. It covered both the cold plate using liquid base and cold plate using the glyco base. So you can look at the document for detail on all the material. Okay, thanks. I think that's all the time we have for questions. Unfortunately, we need to transition to the next speaker. But please find Cam and Philip. Okay, I can take these.